half sister wanted to show up in a wedding dress to my engagement party, so I changed the party theme so she would fit right in. This is OKOP, home to the craziest true stories on earth. I'm Sophia and Riley, what is your wedding party theme? Pirates of the Caribbean. Amazing. <laughs> Check. So OVS Not Main says, my half sister Heather and I never really got along. We're both 24. Um, my father left my mother for her mother and we were born the same month, 20 days apart. Whoa. Oh my God. Same dad? Same dad. No. It doesn't help that Heather's mom hates me and my mom. By extension, Heather and I didn't have the best relationship. I feel like if anyone gets to hate someone, it's the, the OG mom. Mm, yeah. Thanks. <laughs> she has always tried to one up me, even though we both have a similar economic background. So now my fiance and I got engaged last month and our engagement party is this Saturday. Nice dresses, but not I'm going to the Met Gala ball. Nice. Anyway, my cousin hits me up saying she has to show me something. It was the picture of the dress Heather was going to wear. Uh oh. Put I see you in the comments if you see the room. Oh, is oh, oh, go. oh, 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 I got a picture. You have, we have a picture of the dress. Whoa. That's the dress she was going to wear. Yeah. To the, the cash form. Yeah. That's like, she's like at the freaking Bridgerton ball. This is the <laughs> diamond of the season. That's crazy. Where are they having the, no way. Uh, Opie says, this is what the dress looked like approximately. It was a little bit shorter and a bit less puffy. The rest is almost identical. That's insane. Wow. That takes like overdressing to the max. Yeah. Wow. I would just, I don't know. Maybe just, she just has more confidence. But she said I could not less show. puffy. Yeah. But still, like, even if it was just like a little bit tighter, that's. That's still a lot going on there. Why? Wow. Oh my God. Um, OP sa continues. This dress, Jesus Christ, it can only be described as opulent. It was long and white, strapless with sewn in crystals and golden accents. I'm pretty sure it's a wedding dress, but I can't be 100%. That looks like a oh, wedding dress. yeah, that's a good point. That's just a weird thing to wear to an engagement party. That's not supposed to be like formal. Maybe she got a deal. I'm just hoping she got a deal. Yeah, it's yeah. Not how much did she pay for this dress? This made me really mad. So I decided F that. I started texting people telling them that there had been a change of plans and that instead of a casual formal, I decided to make it a costume party. Oh my God. This was the other story, but it was already a costume party. Huh? My mother's side is crazy for Halloween. So they were immediately on board. <laughs> I told my father via text and asked for him to relay the message to Heather or her mother, knowing full well that he would forget or leave it to the last minute. So she has plausible deniability. Whoa. That's so, wow. What, what, like, planning is going on? It's, it's so um, elaborate. It is, it is. Yes. Well thought through. Many cogs, many wheels turning. <laughs> Saturday comes along. Ooh. Guests start showing up, most of them in costumes. Some didn't have time to get one. We just provided them with fun hats and cheap wigs. Word. Heather, my dad, and her mother come like one hour late. As expected. As soon as she notices that everyone was either wearing elaborate costumes or weird accessories and she didn't stand out, she lost it. Oh, shoot. Yikes. Especially when my fiance came along and told her that her bride dress looked amazing for a cheap costume. Fiance is petty. He really uh, is. That's petty. He really I is. love it. I Whoa. love it. It's like, wow, that's that's a great costume for for a cheap cheap look. Wow. <laughs> Uh, she left crying and her mother and my father told me that I was being childish and I could have told Heather myself and not have tasked my father. That's totally his fault. How can yeah. he blame that? No, 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 no. She told them. She told them. For those interested, my fiance was dressed as Bubbles and I was dressed as Mojo Jojo. Oh, I love that from Powerpuff Girls. Uh. That's so cute. My mom and aunts were went as ABBA. Other memorable costumes were Luffy and Zoro, Ian Malcolm and John Hammond and Jesus. <laughs> Yo, he made, you got some wine at the party? Let's go. Love it. Yeah, he's turning all the water into wine. Uh, edit. So why did I invite her? Mm. Uh, someone asks. I think that's pretty obvious. I feel. Because you're half sisters. Yeah. You're saying you share the same dad. Yeah. 
Uh, it's one of those weird family situations where not inviting them would have been more dramatic. You know, when you try pleasing everyone. Plus, I still wanted a relationship with my father, so not inviting Heather and her mom would have made things super difficult and made it so my father would have had to choose. When I kept thinking of it, I noticed that my father wouldn't have chosen me in this scenario, which <gasps> is why I ended up cutting them off. Dang. Oh, that's so sad. So she does end up cutting her father off, too. Oh, Crap. That's... I, yeah, it seems like he chose this other family from the get go. <laughs> His from birth. new family. Yeah. But it, well, according to Sam's theory, we're, we're going to rebrand his marriage rules. Yeah, into a we're theory. not calling it marriage rules. We're calling it theory. Yeah. Mine are the golden rules of dating or breaking up. I don't know. But his, are, his is the golden theory uh, of, of marriage. Of, he did quote one time You're allowed one new family. <laughs> What does that mean? Like to it, stay together. Like, like he, he had one family yeah. and then he moved to a new family. Yeah. All jokes, all jokes. But oh, it was oh, kind of funny. You that, can't like, do it twice. You can I, only yeah. do it once. You yeah. get one switch up. You get a practice that is a family. Move that, that's only, yeah. It's like, um, when you, when you switch your King and your book and chess. Yeah. You can only do it you once. You can only castle once. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. Uh, and then another person says you let her win. I don't know if, I don't know if she did. No. That was Time a, out. That no. was a full <laughs> freaking <laughs> Queen's Gambit move to yes. continue the chess allegories. You won. Yeah, no. Just because I mean, I guess they're saying like, oh, father chose the other family, but that's not that's not that losing. Was not the point. Yeah, that wasn't that wasn't the point was yeah. half sister was gonna show up there, be the best looking one there, but yeah. you made her look like a fool. You made her look like cheap, a cheap skate. Cheap costume. Cheap costume. Ch um, costumes aren't cheap. Anywho, uh, OP responds to you let her win with no. <laughs> Point blank. Yeah. The point of this is to ruin my half-sister's intention. Exactly. Yeah, it wasn't to win her father back. It was to sabotage her half-sister. <laughs> she wasn't just dressed nicely, as some of you put it. She wore a wedding dress to my engagement party. I'd much rather subvert this whole mess rather than have her smugly sitting at the table with her wedding dress. Also, some of you are really hung up on the cheap wigs part and ignore literally everything else regarding the party. What? A minority of our guests wore those cheap wigs. Also, it literally doesn't matter. We had a blast. After she left, I didn't even think of her again until a few days later. I don't regret the costume party. I wish I thought of it earlier, TBH. I, they're referring to... Um, some people didn't have enough time to buy costumes, and so they provided some cheap wigs. To Why these are people, people hung up yeah, on that? Yeah, they literally provided stuff to like <laughs> to make the party work. I, I went to Nashville one time, yeah. and there was a bachelorette party, and everyone had like cheap wigs, and they were yeah. dancing. They had a great time. Yeah, that Being seems fun. I want I want to wear costumes to my engagement party. You can do that. Yeah, I can. You Thank can. you. Um, I have to person. be invited though. <laughs> you will be. Oh damn! No, Didn't make no. the list. <laughs> no, you Crap. will be. No, you will be. You will sure, be. Whatever. It's gonna be. I have to. I have to have a big engagement and wedding, partly because I just have so many people. Yeah. No. No. Yeah. No, no. No. I know why. Yeah. Okay. I have okay story time uh, about Sophia wanting to throw a Valentine's Day party. Okay. I don't know. I don't even remember, know. Okay, I'll tell you. Remember at the you were like, we need a Valentine's Day party because yeah. I want to show off my. Outfit. Yes. That's what you'll be doing at the wedding. You're like, I don't care that I'm getting married. Yeah, I I've want spent, everyone to see I've this dress. Money. Yeah. It's probably going to be made by my mom. So <laughs> I need to show it off. Yeah. Look at this, everyone. Everyone look at my dress. Take pictures now. Okay. Wait, we're continuing the story. Sorry. We got sidetracked. Um, so then another person says, this is a karma whoring repost. And OP says, no, it isn't. I posted the story before on Am I the A-Hole? I just had to wait two weeks to post on here. Also, I can't believe I have to say this, but the lady in the picture is not Heather. <laughs> it's also not the dress she wore. I looked for a picture that looked approximately like the dress. I don't care if you're from Fox or Bored Panda or BuzzFeed or whatever. No, I won't give you an exclusive interview. This is not even newsworthy. WTF kind of journalism is this supposed to be? And there are some additional edits from okay. OP. I didn't think I would have to mention that I have indeed tried to talk to Heather, her mother, and my father a million times about her behavior. It never helps. And she just does something more outrageous. All the ways of diplomacy and dialogue have been exhausted. And so am I. Mm. LOL. I would be too. Uh, edit two. Some people seem to think this is about my wedding. 
It's an engagement party. Heather wasn't the one to show me what she was going to wear. My cousin did. Also, this is not about Heather wearing a nice dress. Heather was going to wear something that looked suspiciously like a wedding dress. The dress code stated casual formal, not white tie. Relevant comments. Great pop 643 says, I saw your post on Am I the A-hole first. What you did was petty. I love it. (laughs) Please tell me you disinvited them to your wedding after that. Uh, OP says, I have officially gone no contact with that side of the family. My father was a spineless slug. I never looked forward to seeing him and have a little love left for him. Yeah. I mean, Spine you don't know slug. you don't know him anything. He no. chose his family. Uh HDMX 539 says Me and my lover Christian had gotten hold of some dry ice. We heard of this thing called dry ice bombs, where you put dry ice and water in a plastic bottle, shake it up, throw it to the street, and it goes I shake it up and I'm about to toss it. And my sister comes outside and I throw it out to the street. I remember the bottle going to the street and it not going off. And Sophia has the bright idea to go and shake it up so it goes off. And she picks it up and then right as she picks it up, it explodes in her ear and she goes, you know who Sophia should have called for her broken eardrums? Who? ZocDoc. ZocDoc is a free app and website where you can search and compare highly rated in-network doctors near you and instantly book appointments with them online. And all these doctors have actual reviews from real verified patients. We're talking about booking appointments with tens of thousands of top rated, patient reviewed, credible doctors and specialists. You can filter for ones that take your insurance and treat basically any condition you're searching for. The typical wait time to see a doctor on ZocDoc is only 24 to 72 hours. Sometimes even the same day. Y'all, we all use ZocDoc and you should too. Go to ZocDoc.com slash OKOP and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top rated doctor today. That's ZocDoc.com slash OKOP. ZocDoc.com slash OKOP. Back to the show. OP, I read your Am I the A-hole post. Why do you have Heather in your life? Keep this in mind. Yes, I get that you would like a relationship with your father. That's fine. No judgment from me on that front. As far as your father's wife and his child with her, she might be a half sibling, but you have zero obligation to her. Mm. I wouldn't keep inviting her anywhere, especially since she tries to outshine you. In fact, I remember commenting on your Am I the A-hole post. If your father is insisting that to have a relationship with him, you must have one with his wife and child. Well, there is a choice for you to make. I would not tolerate this disrespect, bullying and abuse by her. She may share a father with you, but she's really gross and I wouldn't have her in my life. No contact though. Yeah. Crazy. As you should. Yeah. I Because it feels like a big decision, but it just seems that over and over again, the father is choosing Um the half sister and yeah. the new mom. And I wouldn't want that person in my life. No, yeah. absolutely not. It, yeah. I, I feel like it's weird how the half sister is doing all of this. Cause in a way she probably feels yeah. like she's oh, competing for the attention with the, the dad. Competing with yeah. the attention. Oh, OP is better than me. So I have to do all of yeah. this. OP is about to get married. She might not have a significant other or whatever. Yeah. I need to, show out yada yada yeah. yada she uh, i they're probably after this she probably will think back of more instances throughout her life yeah that would this behavior is like a pattern um also it might be some jealousy on the half sister's part because op is the og daughter yeah <laughs> the real one <laughs> she's a real daughter um <laughs> but yeah there, i mean yeah it might be some insecurity or jealousy about that the whole separate family situation mm-hmm um, cause I mean, that is a hard thing to deal with on 100%. either end of it. Yeah. I don't know how I would. Yeah. Deal with if that. I had brothers like trying to like outdo me, yeah. maybe I was the brother that outdid them. <gasps> yeah. Wow. My mom had to talk to me one time. She's like, stop talking about how good your grades are. It's making Tate sad. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> and I was like, okay, dang it. I was that sibling. Oh, uh, I think I did that when I was like little because I had a lot of, well, I didn't have a lot of friends, but I had a, uh, like a, f- a couple of cl- very close friends. And Sam's, the boys at Sam's school were really mean. And so I, I remember always being like, I have so many friends. And my mom was like, stop. <laughs> <laughs> I was very little, but yeah. So oh, maybe, wow. Maybe we're, we're the problem. Maybe we're the problem. Yeah, but we've, we've grown. We've recognized the errors of our way. Have we? Is that a call out? 
to either of us <laughs> maybe we need to do more self-reflection you know, yeah we need to do more work we need to uplift <laughs> our siblings comment Sam, on the great. places we need to <laughs> self-reflect on yeah yeah uh there is an update 20 months later whoa so op says i had planned countless times to update this post i even asked the mods if it was allowed but i was too lazy and always stopped halfway through lol anyway i keep seeing my post on M mother effing TikTok. Yep. I also saw an account that pretended to have an update, and it's just the Minecraft. They're playing Minecraft in the background. Mm. Yeah. Apparently, my husband cheated with my half sister. My mother exploded, and my grandma is a dog. Yeah. Opie's got jokes. Uh, to the update, I got married. Congratulations. Whoa, you did it. Nice. It was an eventful and thankfully drama-free day. My Whoa. That's what we like to hear. Let's go. My father was not in attendance. Good for you. Uh, after my engagement party, I realized that he would never choose me willingly. Even if he loves me, he doesn't love me enough to stand up for me. Damn. He constantly allows his wife and daughter to walk over me and even become abusive. <gasps> that was really apparent when he blamed OP for not telling the half sister directly when she literally told him and he didn't pass on that. Yeah. So I wrote him a lengthy email from my old school days email account and it detailed my resentful feelings against him and uninvited him from the wedding. Then I logged out because I know myself. I would be upset with his answer. And if he wouldn't answer, I would also be upset. I also blocked him and his family from all access. And I went cold turkey, freezing even. I changed phone providers, deleted my social media accounts for a while. He did try to contact me through my mother. She said it was just upsetting. So I told her I didn't want to know. So I just cut him off and boy, my life improved drastically. We had an amazing wedding and unhinged things that happened after the wedding. Oh, wow. I got a cease and desist letter from my half sister. Wait, what's that? It's like, stop. My understanding of a cease and desist letter is like, stop doing these actions. Like, for example, if someone was constantly harassing you by a text or something, you could say uh, cease and desist here, let me or we'll pursue legal actions. But it doesn't seem like that's what. Oh OP's yeah, you're right, you're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. Yeah, it's a continued action. You know, continued. interesting. Um, but that's not. I mean, Opie just cut her off, so I don't understand. <laughs> Talk to me. <laughs> Cease and desist. Your silence. <laughs> Stop silent treating me. Uh, Opie continues. It was very vague and weird, but we quickly found out that it was only a google copy pasta but my stepmother followed me to the supermarket and tried to intimidate me to apologize to heather she made the produce section wildly uncomfortable yikes i feel like you could send out a cease and desist letter to her <laughs> leave me alone the produce <laughs> i'm Come trying on. to pick out my veggies my father tried to pick me up at work he was walking next to me while i went to my car he was trying to get me to apologize to heather and her mom <laughs> I, i'm just seeing heather and her mom being like yeah, right following there. the background apologize to them yeah <laughs> do it do it he said that I should be the bigger person and that I know how both of them are. So I just told him that he must be mistaken because my father is dead. Ooh. Oh, he just stood there as I drove off. Whoa. Yeah. Wow. Opie did not come to play. This is really weird, though, that they're trying to do all this stuff. Yeah. It sounds like they're trying to corner her. And yeah. Be like, I apologize. Now. And it's it's so um, manipulative. Oh, 100%. Because they're not trying they're not trying to get OP back into their life by recognizing what they did. They're instead just seeking retribution for this just yeah. like change of party, you know, change of attire at a party. Yeah. The, I wonder if strange. they feel so yeah. guilty about everything. Yeah. That this is why they're being so forceful. No, I think it is a, a measure of guilt, but also an inability to recognize their own fault in it yeah and it's like those two warring things and they need op's it seems like they needed op's approval or you know something in that For sense them to be able to sleep at night yeah but the only way they the king or they will do it is by getting her to apologize so they want her back in her their life to so they can walk all over but they refuse to apologize and actually accept what they did wrong and that's my therapization sounds like a good their position. Yeah, thank Mary you. Their position. Clause. Yeah. 
Uh, then they started to bother the rest of my extended family. Heather and her mom apparently want them to cut me off finally. But they what? OP already cut them off. You can't cut OP off back. Would you cut a part of the string? You can't. You can't recut the string. Yeah. It's cut. Oh, which backfired spectacularly because now they are cut off, which also means that they're excluded from a lot of family events that they were looking forward to. Plus, they can't use my uncle's cabin. Yo. Yikes. So Heather's mom has allegedly been at her sister's since the whole breakdown. Um, I have to be honest. I don't know how much of this is true. As you know, the toxic gossip train always has to be taken with a grain of salt. I don't know, but I think it's funny. And sad thing is that I don't even miss my father. His absence has made zero negative effect on my life. We did have one more costume party around Halloween, but this time we gave everyone more time and it was even more fun. Aww. My mom's side of the family all pitched in. We got a venue and invited a bunch of people. I recommend this totally. I met so many of my cousin's friends who I have kept in touch with. Nothing else has changed. I still have my old job. I'm not pregnant. We have the same old part apartment we did redecorate though. So that is all for me. Not all too dramatic. And there are two relevant comments. Tilly Jane says, what was the fake cease and desist for? To stop holding costume parties? OP says, for disruptive behavior, I found the template she used in everything. What disruptive <laughs> behavior? Uh, Brown Eyed Girl One says, just curious, how is your mom with your father in all of this? Is she remarried? Hopefully she did better after the trash took itself out. Ooh. OP says she has a longtime partner. He's very lovely. Aww, Yay. Good. I'm glad. So it looks like things are good yeah, now. Yeah, things are on the up and up. Yeah, it seems like they were just creating problems and it's better that they're not there. Yeah. Uh, because they don't want to apologize or accept what they did wrong. They just want to manipulate OP. Yeah. And we don't need that type of energy in our lives. Cut it out. 2024 and is, yeah, 2024 is cutting out the red flags in your relationships. And if that's your dad, cut him off. then dump him. Dump him. Oh, yeah. You're wearing such a great hat for this. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I was also going to say, I love that they threw another costume party. They were like, that was so good yeah. the first time. Let's yeah. do it again. I love that this plot became just a real, uh, it helped OP discover a real passion for costume parties. <laughs> Years <laughs> later, after they do it for like decades, yeah. they'll be like, remember the first the first one when we when we plotted against my half sister my to evil half sister <laughs> <laughs> that's what it is my evil stepmother <laughs> i think we should throw a costume party on halloween i'm so down because i missed halloween this year i was in rome and wait that's the best place to be for halloween it wasn't i had to deal with weird italian men grabbing my arm and i didn't like them and everyone was smoking and someone tried to steal my friend's hat <laughs> Yeah, that doesn't sound like fun. No, it didn't. I had to work on Halloween. Uh, here? Yeah, I was producing. <laughs> That's sad. And then I was Mar I was Luigi and my friend was Mario. Oh, I love that. I was a pirate because that was I had to work with my very limited closet because I only had a backpack. Uh, you were a what? I was a pirate because I, I I could only work with what I had in my backpack. Oh cute. What were you guys for Halloween? Yeah. What will you be for Halloween this year? Because I have to start I really gotta start thinking about it. Now I want to be yeah I mean no not now but I do want to be something cool this year maybe mm -hmm. we should go as a group thing that's what I did the year before I went my house went as um the Scooby Doo gang I was Fred oh yo yeah we low key kind of are the Scooby Doo gang yeah but we can't be a Sco Scooby Doo gang again you're right you're right you're right yeah hopefully I'll like have a couple costumes you know it'd be kind of fun if we did like Pokemon like like Ash Misty Brock dude I don't like Pokemon that's weird yep you know what's not weird. This next story. Whoa. Fiance 29 female cheated on her bachelorette party. I 32 male am struggling to decide the next steps. Riley, how do you cheat on your bachelorette party? You have two bachelorette parties? Yeah. And you, you're you two timing them? You're two timing them. You're doing like um the 27 dresses thing where you're going back and forth between parties. You're like, hey, I got to use the bathroom. Yeah. Yeah. You run. Yeah. And you're like. You're changing uh -huh. in the cab. Oh, wait. I have to, I got to go tie my shoe. I got to go, I got to go drink some water. <laughs> <laughs> Throw a broken and lost says, I'm sorry if this is just a bunch of rambling. I just need a place to write down everything that has happened and hopefully get some advice on what to do next. My fiance, 29 female and I, 32 male, have been together for about seven years now. Whoa. I feel like that's not too crazy. Let's get married. Oh. 
I usually give it like four or five. Four or five? Yeah, I've never been that far. I feel like if your goal is to get married, like, don't go over 10. Um, this is true. Yeah. Unless you're like waiting to give her the best wedding ever. Well, but again, I think it's just a goal. Like, if your goal is never to get married, it doesn't matter. You can date forever. Yeah. But if your goal is to get married... Don't, don't, don't drag it out, I guess. Don't do it. Um, we were supposed to get married next month. Before all this happened, we had no issues with cheating or any big fights. This is the first time anything like this has happened between us. Uh, oh, no. That's so tough. So there was no red flags. There were no red flags. And then a month before they're married, like they're going to get married. Ugh. About two weeks ago, my fiance approached me and asked me if I would be open to us having a bachelor and bachelorette party. This was something that made me really uncomfortable. Personally, I believe that these kind of parties only serve to encourage infidelity before a couple gets married and that they aren't something I'd be interested in. I just realized what the I'm going to sound so stupid when people watch this. I just realized what the title meant. I thought they cheated on the bu- the bachelorette party like they had multiple bachelorette parties. Oh, but they I cheated was, at the bachelorette. Party. I was confused. <laughs> yeah. of Like, why did you say that? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, uh, okay. Uh huh. <laughs> I thought they cheated like on their their bachelorette party people, but they cheated on their partner at the brunch. This is what happens when you read too many cheating stories. Yeah, I was like, wow, this is crazy. How do you cheat on an entire bachelorette party? No, okay. I'm sorry, guys. I had a little bit of a um, brain fart. I expressed that to my fiance, but she told me that if we did have them, they'd just be friends hanging out with us celebrating our future wedding and that we wouldn't have the stereotypical last night of freedom kind of party. After talking for a bit and establishing some boundaries, we agreed to have the parties on the same day, which happened to be this past Wednesday. (laughs) When Wednesday came around, my friends came over to our place for a game of D&D. Hell yeah. That was supposed to be themed around my character getting married while my fiance went out with her friends for a pub crawl. I don't know. I like OP's version. Yeah. (laughs) That sounds great. I was having fun with my friends until about roughly three hours into our game when one of my fiancés and I mutual friends texted me and told me that we needed to talk. Whoa. Uh Uh-oh. Obviously, I immediately became concerned and asked her what was going on, but she said that she didn't feel comfortable discussing over text and said that she'd rather speak to me in person. This really messed me up. And for the next hour, I couldn't really focus on anything else because I kept wondering what could possibly be so important that she wanted to come over and talk to me. She ruined the whole D&D vibe. But like... No, it's important. It is important. It's important. It's important. But the (laughs) D&D... I love that you said that. (laughs) By the time she arrived, my friends and I had already wrapped things up. So I was just waiting for her to come. She came in and asked for us to sit down and talk, which is when she revealed to me that my fiance used the party as an opportunity to cheat on me. No, was that? Wait. At the pub crawl. No, 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 no. Unbelievable. Oh, do you think conspiracy theory? Yes. Do you believe she intentionally made it, made it on the same day so she could? Or do you think it just happened? I don't, I don't know if it matters. Yeah. I don't know if it matters if it was like you know, planned or not. I think that if you're going to, because I I think if that, if you're going to cheat, you're going to cheat. I don't think that OP's original point of, I don't like bachelor parties because I think they create a space for infidelity is necessarily true. But I do think that you have to have a conversation about what type of bachelorette or bachelor party you're okay with. Yeah. Because you know, when you have the stripper things, I think that's weird. That is so sad. Yeah. Unless you and your partner are like going to that together and you're both on the same page and you love that all the more to you. But I think it is weird when you're not, you know, informing your partner. Yeah, because because the way this is framed is like use the party as an opportunity to cheat on me. It sounds like it was pre-planned. It might be, um, which is also awful. But I think either way, even if it wasn't pre-planned, she cheated on you. Yeah. And that's not a. Yeah. That's not okay. I think it would hurt more if it was pre-planned. It would be really, I think it would be really weird if she pre-planned it. I'd be like, why would you do that? It'd be worse. Why did you need to pre-plan a party to cheat on me? OP says, I immediately felt like Mike Tyson had punched me in the chest. This was exactly what I was afraid of when my fiance first approached me about having these parties. And she assured me that was the furthest thing from her mind. 
Until then, I had no reason not to trust her. So I believed her. I felt so stupid for not seeing this coming. You, I don't think you're stupid. No. I think that's totally on her. Yeah. As humans, we always like yeah. expect the best out of people. I think the expectation from your partner, it does not matter if they're having a bachelor party or just going out with friends, is that they won't cheat on you. That That is yeah. always the expectation. I asked my friend if she was sure of what happened and she showed me a video of my fiance kissing some guy at a bar. Apparently, the video was shared in a group chat that my fiance and her friends were on to plan the party. I honestly don't know how I didn't break down crying when I was showed the video. I felt like I was going to throw up. There was the woman that I was supposed to spend the rest of my life with kissing another man while her friends cheat her on. What horrible friends. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, that's not cool. Condoning that type of behavior. Yeesh. The ne this next part is my friend's recollection of the events that led up to the cheating. So I don't have a whole lot of details. Apparently, my fiance's maid of honor spent the entire night complaining that I wouldn't let them have a traditional bachelorette party and that I was too controlling and jealous. Whoa, her friends Ooh. suck. Her friends suck. There, there is a difference between <laughs> not letting your have a not letting your partner have a party at all. Yeah, that is too controlling. But being asking your partner not <laughs> to cheat on you to be respectful to be respectful of your relationship is that, that really is not too controlling. Much to ask for? That is just having respect for your partner yeah. that you're about to get married to. Uh, my fiance didn't push back on any of it and just kept drinking and having her fun. At some point, some of the women noticed that she had been getting attention from some of the men, which is when the maid of honor started to encourage her to flirt. My fiance gave some weak resistance, but eventually she gave in and approached one of the guys at the bar. Mm. This is the point where our mutual friend became uncomfortable and left the party early, but she was still in the group chat where the video was shared. I thanked my friend for telling me what happened and asked her to forward me the evidence along with anything else that might end up being shared with her. After she left, I finally broke down crying, then texted my fiance telling her that I knew the wedding was off. Just a few minutes later, my phone was flooded with text messages from her and her friends. They even tried adding me to the group chat where they shared the video of her kissing the other man. She got, why? Uh, just to like harass him? She got home after 30 minutes later. She was crying when she came in and begged me not to call off the wedding. She was telling me that she was drunk and that she didn't know what came over her. She claimed that she didn't do anything other than kissing and that she loved me. I stayed silent through all of her crying, which I think only made her more desperate. She kept saying how sorry she was, how it would never happen again, and how she would cut off all the friends that were at her party. This is not about her friends. We all know her friends suck. This is about her own actions. If you yeah. can't, can't take responsibility for your actions, she's she's pushing it off on her being drunk and her friends being a bad influence. But this is all her. This is all you. My friends didn't force her to do anything. I told her that I didn't want to talk about what happened and that the wedding was still off. I also told her that she could call her friends over and have the traditional party she obviously wanted so much because I was leaving. This made her even more desperate and I kid you not, made her try to block the door to prevent me from leaving. Oh. I just stayed silent while packing my bag, then called my sister over and asked her if I could stay with her for a couple of days. I have now been at my sister's house for the last few days, calling friends and family to tell them that the wedding is off. Dang. I haven't told anyone other than my sister the reason. I just feel so humiliated. My ex has been calling and texting me every day for the past two days. My sister has been offering me support, but I just don't know what to do next. I feel so lost. Despite everything that happened, I still love her. Should I hear my fiance out? Should I tell people the reason the wedding is off? Is there any hope for reconciliation? Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, canceling a wedding is probably cheaper than divorce. Yeah. Yeah. I think at this point, I know it's been seven years, but you're not on the same page about what's respectful in a relationship. Mm. I think this is just a, a really great indicator of what the rest of married life will look like too. And I think that, you know, you're getting out at the right time. I, I hate the like just the environment yeah. that she set up. And OK, here's my question. Yeah, it was just yes, she did cheat, but yeah. they've been together for seven years. Yeah. And it was kissing at a bar. Yeah. On a bachelorette party. Would you still stay together with your partner after that? Probably not. Probably not. I think especially because. Seven years. Yes, seven years, but OP specifically said, hey, this these are my fears yeah. about you having a bachelor 
uh, bachelorette party and o- um, Opie's uh, fiance said, no, I would n- I'm not even thinking about that. That's not even on gotcha. my mind. And then went out and did that. So it's the fact that he set boundaries, he set boundaries and they were broken. Yeah. Cause yeah. I was like, which I mean, it still sucks. Yeah. That, but without the boundaries part, yeah. Would you still like break it off? Yeah. Um, I, I still would. I understand there's a world where some people might not because it's mm-hmm. been seven years and they're about to get married and you might, you know, some people might be a bit more forgiving in those scenarios. But I think if this is OP's initial feeling that I want to break off this wedding, I think that they have to follow that. Yeah. Because I think that they're saying, I still love her. Of course, they're still going to love her. This is recent. Mm-hmm. This isn't something you're not going to stop loving her, even if she hurts you. Um, but I still think that it's valid for you to um, take this the course of action because yeah. she did hurt you. And she did break that boundary and um, break that promise. Yikes. Um, That's so tough. Yeah. That really, really sucks. And there are some relevant comments. Um, Reasonable Major 1678 says, was there more than kissing? OP says, according to my fiance, no. She kissed the guy, then went straight back to her friends. They were on their way to the next bar when she received my text telling her that the wedding was off. Whoa. That was a live time. Whoa. Wow. Uh, reasonable major 1678 says a lot of things could have happened during that time. And I guess after that, you don't have much trust in her. Also, do you think her friends set her up? OP says, you're right that the trust is pretty much gone. I don't think that this was a setup from the way our mutual friends described it. It felt like an opportunity presented itself while the rest of the group egged my fiance on. Yeah. Yeah. A ginger snap 49 49 says to me, that just feels like she's not taking full accountability and is willing to put quite a bit of blame on her friends. Yeah. That's the thing. It might've been different if she had reacted and said, I, this was completely my fault. I made a bad decision, but I, you know, but there is no uh, responsibility. Yeah. Taken. And, and I feel like when people shift like that, they know it's yeah. their fault Yeah, and they don't want to, they don't want to accept that. No. Um, denial. Yeah. Ginger snap continues. Yes, they should be cut off. My friends would never have encouraged that scenario. Put me or let me put myself in a situation that could result in that much less cheer it on and encourage it. They would have dragged my ass from the bar long before it could go that far. People are who they surround themselves with. Are any of them married? I'd be mm. curious how any and all of those bachelorette parties have gone. And if this is a pattern for that group, the friend that came to you seems to be the only one with morals. I have zero tolerance for cheating. Once that trust is gone, it really doesn't ever fully come back. I couldn't deal with always wondering or questioning her motives. OP responds, I don't know all of her friend group that well, but to my knowledge, only the friend that came to me and told me what was happening is married. That's gotcha. interesting. Ah, uh, yeah, that's so mm, tough. I yeah. hate the lack of respect that her friends had for their relationship. Yeah, because like going forward, if they were okay with this being at the bachelorette party and they worked this out, yeah, her friends are still not going to look at him as a good enough partner for her, mm-hmm. and it's just going to be bad. And 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 yeah. that's a great question. Are any of them married? Yeah, they probably don't even have that perspective in their mind because no. they're like. They're all single. They're like, oh, just have fun. It's fine. Yeah. Like the world's yours. Yeah. But the married one's like, no, like. This is a commitment. Commitment. And again, I, I just hate the idea of this is your last night of freedom for a bachelorette party because marriage is a certificate. It doesn't mm. change the um the boundaries uh, or, you know, the parameters of your relationship. It is purely a certificate. It shouldn't be changing that much of your relationship. You yeah. should have respect before and you should have respect after. Yeah. There was, um, uh, Michael, we went to Bali yeah. with him and he was talking about how whenever people celebrate things, they make this big, like whenever you yeah. graduate, you have like this little moment of time, whenever you walk across the stage or like yeah. when you get married, you have that little ceremony, wherever you get the bride. Yeah. But like, like you said, it's still the same. Yeah. It's just, yeah. One little thing happens in that. Yeah. And a celebration is great. I love a celebration and it is okay to um, make it a big deal. Yeah. But yeah, it, it your relationship is the same as it was before. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it is not a pass to cheat bef- just because you're not married. 
Medible nine says, I'm curious about what the boundaries were that you mutually set for these parties. What exactly did you two agree to? OP says no strippers or any other kind of sex workers, no staying out until too late, no getting hammered and no tempting infidelity. No, I don't know if I agree about the no staying out too late. Um, but everything else. Yeah. Those are valid concerns. Yeah. That's, that's a fair thing. And there is an update Shoo. from two months later. Which would be after the wedding because the wedding was a month from then. Do you think they worked it out? I don't think so. Me neither. I think if it's two months later, I don't think they worked it out. Yeah. But let's find out. Didn't think I'd be posting an update after everything that has happened, but a lot of people asked for it. And I feel like writing down some of the stuff might help me with putting this all behind me. Not really looking for any advice here. Just putting my thoughts out there. As I said in the last post, I called off the wedding. At first, I didn't tell anyone the reason, but as people here pointed out, it was something that I had to do if I wanted to get ahead of this. So I started calling people again and let them know exactly why the wedding was off. It was an effing humiliating experience to tell people my fiance made out with some other guy while her friends cheered her on. But everyone has been really supportive, especially my parents and my sister. That's good. That's, That's good. good. I also called my ex's parents since they helped with some of the expenses of the wedding and I wanted to let them know that they should try to get their deposits back. To my surprise, my ex's mother picked up the phone. She already knew everything that had <gasps> happened. Wow. Well, that makes sense. She would, her daughter would tell her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, apparently my ex told her everything. I didn't ask her some questions to see just how much they knew and everything seemed to line up with what I knew happened. They didn't try to make me stay with my ex or anything. As for my ex herself, she and I did meet once to discuss everything. She begged me for a second chance and even said that she would cut off her friends who enabled her and suggested that we go we could go to couples counseling. Mm. I told her that I don't want to spend the rest of my life being her warden, making sure that she isn't hanging out with people I don't approve of, and that if we began a marriage already going to couples therapy for something as big as this, then we were already doomed to fail. Wow. That's fair. I also told her that I can't see how I would ever trust her again after she did the exact thing I expressed my concerns about, and that a marriage can't survive without trust. So... This is where I am now. I'm single and I think I'm going to stay that way for a while. Yikes. Yeah, that was seven years. That was seven years. Yo, yeah. It still hurts after spending seven years together with this woman, but there's just no trust there anymore. Anyway, I don't think I'm going to post any more updates. As far as I'm concerned, I'm ready to close this chapter of my life. Question. And there are some relevant comments. Yes. Um, whenever you're with someone for a number of years, yeah. how long should you take in order to get back out there in the game? I think it depends on the person because some people, and I, I think we've talked about this before. I think it depends on the person mm -hmm. and your specific, like, ab you know, ability to move on from things. Uh, but I think it also depends on how the relationship ended. Um, because if it ended like this, you have a seven year relationship, a uh, partner cheats on you, but you, you are, you know, still love them. Uh, I think you could take a little bit longer. Yeah. Um, before getting out there again, maybe, you know, minimums, I don't know, six months or something, six months. Yeah. Maybe five months. I, but I don't know if that's too long. Again, I, it depends on the person. Yeah. I feel like the fully heal, it's like half of whatever the relationship was. You want, you're saying th three years. That's a long time. Well, maybe like a cap at two, maybe a year and a half. I don't know. It just I took know, me, that feels long. it just took me a while to like, I, I think it's figure different. that out, yeah. you know? Like I tried to go on dates with people, but like I did go on a date with someone like, yeah, like six months after that. But like, I, I don't think I was fully yeah there. Yeah. And I think it also is okay to try, you know, like, let's say you hit the six months mark and you're like, I think I'm ready to start dating. And then you go on a date and you realize, no, I'm actually not ready for that. I think yeah. that's okay too. That's a good I mean, point. As long as you're not leading people on and you know, you're going on like <laughs> two months long, you know, dating them for two months and then you realize, oh I'm actually not ready for this. Um, yeah, that's messed up. Yeah. Not cool. <laughs> that's not cool. Um, but yeah, I think it depends person to person. Yeah. Cool. What's your, what's y'all's like math yeah. on that? Yeah. Cause I don't know if there's specifically a certain, uh, you know, a one date mm -hmm. uh, or one amount of time. And I feel like it's different if it, like cheating is a good scenario yeah. because it just happened. Yes. But like I've been hearing scenarios of like women that have been in a relationship and they're out of the relationship mm -hmm. months before they break up. Yeah. And they've already, and they're able to move on faster because yeah. they've already moved on a couple months before that. So if you find out the time that they moved on, plus 
the amount of time they've been broken up with. Yes. That makes it six months or whatever. Yeah. Cause this is super fresh for OP. Yeah. This is, I still love them. I'm just super hurt. So that yeah. might take longer. Um, and there are some relevant comments. Uh, one commenter says, I just don't understand why people don't learn to talk things out. Yeah. That, is that so hard? Yeah. Well, I think they're saying I, they're against the, um, Oh, oh yeah. I'm calling off the wedding. Yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. That woman is ready to give up her life for you. And you decided to apply the most extreme punishment possibly possible because she drunkenly made out with someone for 30 seconds, a little perspective and a little crime doesn't fit the punishment. Couples counseling at any stage is a good thing, especially as newlyweds. Hmm. I disagree with that comment. This is, I mean, I see where this person is coming, coming from, from yeah. but they're not taking into account like yeah. the, boundaries that, the boundaries that they talked about. Yeah. Because I think that this, you know, people say the same thing about, you know, flirting with someone over text for, you know, a while. They're like, oh, it was just flirting. That's still a boundary that's been crossed. Oh, yeah. 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 I don't think it matters how small or big the thing is. Yeah. If it hurt some, the other person and it crossed a boundary, I think that that is, you know, something that they get to decide how much that hurt them. And it seems like it hurt OP a lot. Uh, OP says, I am not doing this to punish her. In fact, I don't harbor her any ill feelings. I just don't have any more trust for her after what has happened. I expressed my concerns and she still betrayed my trust. I understand mm -hmm. that counseling is a good thing for newlywed couples, but I don't want to start a marriage on such a weak foundation. Kevin R13 says, wonder how her maid of honor feels now while well, your girlfriend made the choice while being drunk, but the maid of honor definitely had a part to play in it. Yeah. It's just, these are bad friends. That is, that is obvious. Yeah. Like your party. I've been to plenty of bachelor parties where no temptations of any kind were present. Just a bunch of guys hanging out together. No one made jokes about why the groom isn't doing something for his last moments of freedom. No one pushed him to do or say anything weird that would be out of line for him, etc. In other words, those parties I went to, I had a bunch of guys who respected the way that the bachelor wanted to have his party and everyone still had a great time. So while your ex did make her choices, that Maid of Honor hopefully is either consoling her or booted out of her life. OP says, Maid of Honor contacted me once in the early days after everything blew up. She was begging me to take my ex back and said that her friendship was in danger. <laughs> From the one conversation I had with my ex, she has been cut off. I mean, good on the ex. I, I really hope that yeah. the ex learns from this mistake. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, <sighs> this was, you know, a hard way to learn it, but yeah. you shouldn't. Yeah, I, I do, too. And I, and I hope like that the ex can move on from this and like her life. Yeah. Isn't this isn't her life because she's 29. Yeah. She's 29. She's been with this guy since she was 22. Yeah. Like yeah. all of her 20s has been this. And now she's going into 30. Yeah. Like almost been married cheated that's oh her mental space I, yeah please go to therapy please yeah. go to therapy that I, is so yeah. tough yeah absolutely oh i think i was just thinking i think there is a world i personally think it's okay for op to you know end this relationship completely mm -hmm. i think there is a world if he is still in love with her you know he's thinking about this there is a world where they cancel the marriage but revisit the relationship yeah. Um, once she's had that kind of time to, you know, go to counseling and figure that out. Um, but I don't think she is obligated to a second try in the relationship. I think OP is, you know, merited in cutting that off. Yeah. Okay. Let's just say in some crazy world. Yeah. We're the ex. Yes. We were about to get married. We did this. Yeah. How do you move on from this? And how do you explain to your next partner what happened? Because, I mean, it's going to come up. You've been together with that yeah. guy for seven years, almost got married. And then how do you explain that to them and let them know, hey, I'm not going to do that anymore. I yeah. learned. But you are still labeled as a cheater. Yeah. Once you tell them that. How do you move yeah. on? Yeah. I don't know, man. I think a ton of therapy. A ton. You have to do the work. You have to put the work in. You can't just go to the next relationship and be like, well. I I know now. Yeah. I think you have to do the work. And you and you have to be completely honest with your next yes. partner and be like, hey, this is what it was. Yeah. This is the the people I was around. This is the way I acted. But since then, been putting it in in the yoga. Yeah. Meditation. That's yeah. me. Therapy. Yeah. Therapy. Praying. Yeah. Cut going off to church, friends. Whatever you yeah. do. Cut off the negative influences. Yeah. But this is really it's still really sad because this is, again, we said seven year relationship. The, you know, 29, 32. Ugh. Yeah, that hurts. Yeah. I feel like OP is going to be all right. Even I though this so. sucks, it's just going to take a minute for him yeah. to figure it out. 
But he's going to get yeah. his money up. He's going to go to the gym, get shredded. Get shredded. Today I effed up by almost ruining my best friend's wedding with a pair of handcuffs. What do you mean you can see a pair of the gym? <laughs> You have to read it. You have to this read is it. okay. OP, home to the craziest true stories on earth. I'm Sophia and Riley. What do you mean, your family? <laughs> Just read it. Just get into it. Get into it. It's hilarious. Right, it's okay. hilarious. Snoopy2022 20, says, Today I have up by almost ruining my best friend's wedding. My seven year old was the ring bearer, my four year old the flower girl, and I was the maid of honor. Oh my God. This is a family affair for their best friend's wedding. This is so cute. Aww. As usual, we were scrambling to get ready. I had just gotten the kids dressed in their outfits and was in my bathroom putting on my makeup. After about 30 minutes, it was unusually quiet. Whatever. <laughs> I figured they were just playing like normal. Never figure that with kids. <laughs> They're up to something. I had just barely finished when I heard a timid voice from my inside room. Mommy, my seven-year-old says, I think I did something. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. Thinking you just messed up his tux or something. I went into my room and then froze in disbelief when I saw him. He sat on the floor with a real pair of handcuffs cuffing his wrist to his ankle. <laughs> what? Where did he get a real pair of handcuffs? <laughs> What? I can just see one of my little brothers doing this. Oh, you know, as a Easily. kid, I think I would, if I got my hands on a real pair of handcuffs, I would absolutely have cuffed my hands together. 100%. Was, from his wrist to his ankle. How did he do that? This is a seven year old, but I don't know what the thought process was there. Uh,. OP says, I was dumbfounded. So many questions ran through my mind. The first being, where the F did he get a pair of real handcuffs from? <laughs> no, wait. I finally muster up the words to ask. He doesn't want to tell me, but finally does with his head lowered in shame. D's toolbox. Again, WDF, my boyfriend, D. <gasps> had just moved in with us and still had stuff lying around randomly. Why no. does why does Opie's boyfriend have handcuffs? Are these like pot potential handcuffs? Potential handcuffs. Was he an ex? I think he was an ex cop. Oh, yeah. Why would he have real handcuffs yep. otherwise? Yeah. Ex cop. Yeah. Oh, boy. Uh, <laughs> turns out he had an old pair of handcuffs from somewhere in an old toolbox he never used anymore, but had kept in our closet. WTF, I asked for the key. He can't find it. Oh no, this is not the wedding. This is the day of the wedding. Her no. son is the, the ring bearer. No. He needs his hands. Oh my God. He's just walking down. He's like hopping. <laughs> uh, the clock is ticking. We have three hours till the wedding and it's an hour drive. It's oh. useless. I call around to different locksmiths and find one down the street that can help. I ended up carrying my son to the car, then into the locksmiths because, of course, he can't walk upright. The locksmith's face when I when he saw us was priceless, but I was humiliated. How the hell do I explain how this happened? Thankfully, the locksmith didn't ask any questions. He, ex he politely helped us by unlocking the cuffs and my son was finally free. Meanwhile, my best friend kept calling and asking where the hell we were. They were starting the pre-wedding photos. No time to explain now, I told her, but we're on our way. We had an hour and a half before the wedding. I drive like crazy to get there. We made it 15 minutes before the start of the wedding. My best friend was ready to kill me. We missed the photos, but at least we made the ceremony. Oh my gosh. That is too funny. That is That's hilarious. That's so funny. I feel I, like they can take photos after. That's not such a big deal, but oh my God. I was... I thought that um, beforehand, like one of the like, it was a family event and yeah. one of the like cousins or uncles got up to something and was like, hey, it'd be funny if you put these yeah. handcuffs 
give it to a seven year old and then they like handcuff yeah, them. Yeah, they handcuff them. <laughs> yeah, no, this was completely unrelated to the wedding. The oh. the child just seems to have found handcuffs in the house. That's crazy. Yeah, the, this is on the boyfriend. He can't be leaving handcuffs around. He can't be doing it, that. Yeah, this is like the same thing when, you know, he can't leave scissors around for a child. You gotta lock these things up. You gotta lock them up. Handcuff the, <laughs> the handcuffs to something. Yep. You got to do that. Yeah. How do people, how, why do, how much are handcuffs? I don't know. I've never looked that up. 35 bucks from Amazon. Dude, that's so weird. I mean, if you're into that, great. But kind of mean. <laughs> I mean, if you're into that, okay. no, more power to you. <laughs> more power to you. Yeah. Dude, the shock on her face when it's like, oh, I didn't know D was into that. And then her <laughs> seven year old, like, just on the ground, like, mom, <laughs> mom. Oh, that's so funny. Crazy. Yeah. So there we have it. Those are some crazy wedding stories. I think this one's the best one. This one is the best one. You guys always ask for light stories to wrap us up. And I think this was a good. This is good. Uh, If you have a crazy Reddit story, please go to r slash OKOP show. Put that in there. If it's wedding related like this, something funny and light. We love funny and light. We love funny and light. If it's handcuff related, love it. Keep the. Oh, XXX out of it, but yeah, we still yeah, love yeah, a good yeah. hand. Keep it, keep it child safe. Mm-hmm. Safer work. Yeah. If um, it's too crazy, I'll let John and Sam read it with Sophia out of the room. Yeah, yeah. We'll still read it, but we won't read it on air. Yeah. On air. On on camera. On live. On live. Ooh. On air. Also, join our live streams. We're join making it. a schedule soon. I made one last night. Yeah. Ooh. But uh if you love us, make sure to subscribe. We love you and see, see you tomorrow. tomorrow.